I know you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. something from the Lord. Tell the Lord this afternoon, minister to my, my life, minister to me, O oh God. We are in the glorious presence of God. Mashakata. We are in your presence, Lord, tonight. You can work on my voice. It's not good. We are in your presence, O oh God. Let the Holy Spirit of God be manifested here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God. We empty ourselves to you, O oh God. That you may fill us tonight with the presence of your power. Thank you, Jesus. So you are great. You do me what goes. Lord, that we can be filled afresh. It is in your presence, Lord, that we can be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, help us tonight to understand when you visit to us, O oh God. Let the crowd of your presence fill this place. I pray for anyone that is watching us, anyone that is under my voice tonight. I pray for the awakening of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Let there be move, let there be power of God that will move in a very powerful way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to thank God for you. And uh, it's another great Wednesday. We are in the uh, uh, gracious, precious, powerful presence of the Most High God. And uh, we've been doing the visitation of God for the last two weeks. And today I'm doing visitation of God part two. And uh, I believe there, there, will be, there will be power here tonight. No, that voice is good. Thank you. The Bible says that everywhere that Jesus went, he was doing good. And uh, his presence is here tonight. And I said some, something yesterday in my blog that if we can spend a lot of time building the kingdom, 
that thing hit Peter and Peter asked a lot of questions on my inbox and I uh, was able to answer him according to the wisdom of God. That the Lord is looking for the church. The church can, which can slow down the concentration of rebuking of the devil but the church that will work so hard and so quickly in building and establishing the kingdom of God. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray and he said, as you pray, say, our Father who is at in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In the whole teaching of Jesus, there is no praise that Jesus teach his apostles or disciples in the prayer of the Lord to rebuke the devil. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In Matthew 28 verses 19, Jesus said, Go ye to the whole world and teach them uh, to observe all things that I taught you, and I will be with you until the end of the age. He never mentioned the rebuke of the devil. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verses 8, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. He never talked about the rebuking of the devil. Why? Because Jesus knew one thing that I have given them the power and anointing. That you don't need to rebuke the devil or speak to the devil so that he can fear you. Once you have Jesus, you have conquered the world. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, he said that he has disarmed the devil and his power. So why less so with somebody who is already grounded, somebody who is already on the ground, concentrate and establish the kingdom of God. Because when the kingdom of God is with you, you have power. You have anointing. You have manifestation of God. You have Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Amen. That was by the way. Open your Bible in the book of Genesis 21 verses 1 and 2. That is where I'm doing the introduction of my teaching tonight. Very briefly today is a midweek service and I know uh, my daughter Marianne is in the house. Marianne, God bless you for coming. I don't want to keep her stuck in Kasana because she waited for the service and she's traveling far. And I want her to go home with something. Something. Say something. You there. Genesis 21 verses 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Salah. As he had said. And the Lord did not did for Sarah as he had spoken. There are two things that I want you to mention on that package. One, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did to Sarah as he has spoken. Ah. I love this God. I love this God. Oh, I feel the presence of God is beginning to flow here. Verses 2. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God. Huh? What is your question saying Peter? He said the time of which God had spoken to him. So there is something that I want you to understand tonight as we speak about this visitation of God part 2B. That anytime God speaks, he does. He never fails in his time. We can fail because we fail. But God never fails. Now, Sarai is at 75. No, she was at 65 by then. And the Lord spoke to Sarai and told her that I'm going to give you a son. But now Sarai's understanding and her spiritual level was, so, was too low. She laughed at the angel of God. I said, hey, 65, James, Nizai. But the Bible says, as the Lord has spoken, he did as he has spoken. At the age of 82, uh, 75 she was able to conceive and I want to mention about six things the result of visitation of God 
matokeo ya kutembelewa na Mungu because many of the time tumaitembelewa na Mungu tumeaiwa na Mungu but what are visitation uh, the results of visitation of God or visitation result in one when God visits our life he comes with something we call supernatural manifestation supernatural manifestation the bible says in the book of genesis chapter chapter 3 verses number 8 and he had a loud he had a sound from the lord who was walking in the garden in a cool day of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden god used to visit them in the middle of the in the cool hour of the day they were having fellowship with god they were having communion with god they were friends with god they could feel god they could see god walikuwa natembelewa na mungu kila wakati lakini maandiko yanasema they they every time the visitation of god could come they could feel god moving into their lives and i've come to ask somebody this morning this evening rather do you feel god when he was is walking in your life unasikianga ule mtembelewa wa mungu Do you feel God? Hey come on. Do you feel God? Listen to his ask 61 64 verses 1. What the Bible says. I'm just laying a foundation. He said, "Oh, that you drained the heaven that you'd come down the mountain might shake at your presence so any time there is a mighty manifestation of god the mighty visitation of god there is a supernatural manifestation in other words it means when god comes in your life he never leaves your life as it is god comes to fulfill god comes to do something new god come to empower god come to encourage god come to to break every yoke every shackle every chains of the devil god come to enlarge the territory because any time he visited us there is a supernatural manifestation of god and i speak to somebody tonight there is a supernatural manifestation that is about to rise in your life it doesn't matter the 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 the, the, the life that you've been living it doesn't matter the, the the chains the walls that the devil has put in your life it doesn't matter whether he has stopped your spiritual hearing from hearing god but i've come to tell you as he used to visit adam and eve in the noon of the hour and they could feel the steps of the lord i have come to ignite your spiritual ears that you may feel the lord's walking in your life that you may understand him as he speak to your life number two, the second results he comes to restore he comes with restoration <laughs> in the book of jeremiah 27 verses 22 This was the time when the children of Israel they were in captivity they were in Babylon. Na maandiko yanasema walipokuwa kule Babeloni walikaa chini ya miteka na mateso na kudharauliwa na kukaa katika hali ngumu. But in verses 22 the Bible says and they shall be carried to Babylon. And they shall be be until the day I visit them says the Lord. Then I'll bring them upon and restore them into their place. And I've come to prophesy to somebody. You might be in a Babylon. You might be in captivity. You might be in a bondage. But I've come to declare and decree restoration over your life. The Bible says, The children of Israel, it was prophesied 4,030 years ago. Na walika katika mikono ya wateka. But the time came when the Lord was to bring them out of the Babylon. And there is something powerful that that verse in Asema and they shall be until the day that I visit them. It means you cannot come out of Babylon. You need the visitation of God. Unahitaji mtembelewa wa Mungu ili ukatoke katika ile hali, ukatoke katika ile mitego uliyoshikwa. It need the visitation of God. The children of Israel they were in that position. They were in that life. They didn't understand. They knew it was normal. But the Bible says because of the visitation of God, things begin to change and they came out of Babylon. And I've come to decree to somebody. 
as the Holy Spirit of God visits us tonight, there is a shift in the spiritual realm. And the Lord is restoring us into the place where we are ought to be. And I said here the other day, there are, there are some people who are living the life that is not their life. There are people who are in the office that is not their office. There are people who are driving a car, Dan, that is your car. Namandiko nasema vizuri. When the presence of God will fall into the lichens, yale mambo yaliyo chukuliwa na wenye haki, na wasio haki, it will change hand and it will fall into the hands of the lichens. And I've come to declare that restoration in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 29 verses 10, the Bible says, that is the Lord. After 70 years are complete in Babylon, I will visit and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return into this place. There is a place that God is taking you. There is a place that God is returning you. You might be walking in a, in a valley. You might be walking in a path that is not the will of God. But I'm here to ignite you. I'm here to charge you. I'm here uh, to, to transfer you from that area, that path that you are in. Because the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord has anointed me in the book of Isaiah 1. Jesus came for two purposes. To deliver, to save, and to set free. And number three, when the Lord visits, visits us, he comes or he fulfills the fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Sema kuza matunda. Genesis 21 verses 1, the Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as, she, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah was barren. She was living a normal life. Just imagine at the age of 65, she's beyond menopause with 15 years. So it was, the, it was beyond repair. Nothing could happen. But something happened to Sarah. The Bible says when the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, the Lord did. As he had spoken. And I have come to cancel every word that was spoken over your life. And I have come to connect you with the word of God. Because what we need in this life we live. It is the connection of the word of God. Whatever the Lord has declared upon our life. We say the other day. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verses 12. That when we received Christ. We were given power to become the children of God. In other words. Whatever that was initiated in our life. Must come to pass. Because we are the children of God. The devil cannot stop the project of God. He cannot. Because we are the children of God. We are hearers together with Christ. We are peculiar people. We are chosen. We are royal priesthood. We carry the kingly anointing. And I've come to declare. That whatever the Lord has spoken in his word. Because what we fail to capture the blessings of God. It is because we don't know who we are. When you want to begin to understand your identity in Christ, wewe ni nani? If I am a son of the king, I walk like a king. If I'm a son, if I'm a daughter of the queen of the king, I walk like a daughter of the king. But the devil has has, has put a veil in our life, the veil of ignorance that we may not know who we are. We are living in poverty, yet our God say he was made poor that we may become leech. We are living in bondage. And the Bible says we, we, he, was, he, was, he was stoned. He was bruised. He was arrested that we may be free. We live in curse and he say he was cursed that we may receive blessings. But the devil want to put us in that veil. That we may not know who we are. And live in that life saying oh, oh, oh. But the Bible says as the Lord visited Sarah. He had, and did what he has said. And whatever he spoken over the life of Sarah, he made sure that he has fulfilled it. And Sarah became fruitful. The barren woman was in the record of the Bible. You know, the Bible does not just put somebody, uh, just a name and something because it is there. Anybody, anything that you see it written in the Bible, it was confirmed and it was proved. So Sarai was barren. And it was in the history of the Bible that she could not bear the child. But something happened to Sarai 
when the Lord visited Sarai, she was able to receive a child. And I've come to speak to you. Whatever barrenness it might be in your life, it might be financial barrenness, it might be a career, you might be barren in the area of your career, you might be barren in the area of your business. You might be barren in that area that you're trusting God for. I have come to connect you. I have come to declare to you. May that barren be lifted in the name of Jesus. I have come to command it by the virtue of the anointing upon my life. May, 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 let it be lifted in the name of Jesus. I command that situation. Begin to be fruitful. Begin to produce. Begin to bear fruits. Begin to become resourceful. Begin to become of value in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God created you. Then you may be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And number four, deliverance. When Lord visits us, he comes with deliverance. There is something that is so powerful here in the book of Daniel chapter 3 verses 14. I want you to listen to this declaration, no? That is made by the king Nebuchadnezzar in verses 14. He says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you don't serve the gods, the gods with a small g, and worship the gods' image, which I said before you? That was a question. It was, a, it was not a friendly question. But it was a serious question. I have set a golden God. I hear you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You don't serve their God. Neither worship them. You know, sometimes the devil will put barriers and doors and things in our life. He wants us to follow that truth. He wants us to be on his path. The devil will never take something that belongs to you. But what he does, he debriquette. Remember, in the book of Matthew chapter 3, and in the book of Luke chapter 3, the Bible says, when Jesus was coming out of water, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and the voice from heaven came upon him and said, this is my son, in him I am well pleased. That was declaration from God. But come to the next chapter 4. The devil is coming to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verses 4 and he's saying if you are the son of God change this stone and make it bread. Let me ask you. Yes, walikuwa nahitaji more confirmation kujulikana ni mwana wa Mungu. Already the God, the God of ancient, the creator of heaven and earth has made a declaration that this is my son in him I'm all priest. But now the devil is using the words of God by saying, if you are the son of God, change this stone and make them bread. So, God has already ordained Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But now the king is coming and telling them, I hear you don't bow to this God. I hear you don't worship to this God. That was a challenge from the king. And the sentence was them to be thrown into the fire and be consumed. But something comes in verses 25. The same chapter. Verses 25. Daniel chapter 3 verses 25. The Bible says. Look. Now it is the king. The, the same king is saying. I make, I said. To them. You did not bow. Neither worship this God. But the same same chapter verses 25. He said look. He answered. I see four men rose walking into the midst of the fire. That is the king. And they were not hurt. And for the form of the four is like the son of God. Now, the same king who is making declaration that you should not bow to that God. You should not neither you should not neither worship your God, but you must worship the God that have stationed. That when, when the bells and the trumpet of Babylon are, are brewn, everyone should bow to that God. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they make a declaration and say, I will not and we will not worship this God. 
Now the news went to the king that these three men wamekataa amri ya rais kuinamia huo Mungu. Na rais mwenyewe aka make a, a, a press conference. Akasema I hear you refuse to bow to this God. But something is happening the deliverance of God fall in the land. And the Bible says in verses 24 the same same king said see I put the three men on the fire but I see four men but in the midst of the four men I see the fourth man who look like the son of God and I've come to declare to you this morning Whatever decree that has been made in your life, let there be change of hand. And whatever they say that will finish and destroy your life, let it change against them. Let that decree be changed to good. In the mighty name of Jesus, I lift and change every word that was mentioned against your life. And the same same king said, there will be no other God ambaye atainamiwa katika Israeli ila tu Mungu wa Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Your idea look foolish at this moment mambo yale unaona yanaweza kaa pumbafu but i've come to declare to you those word that you speak those word that god see, shows you hayo mambo ambayo yanakaa kana kwamba hayana maana i have come to ignite them tonight i have come to empower them tonight let them become a, let there be a change of hand and whatever decree and announcement that you make begin to become power in the life that you live the word of shadrach meshach and abednego to worship the true god was established by the king and the king make a decree kareb kusiba na mungu mwingine na katangaza yule atakaye inamia mungu mwingine isipokuwa wa Shadrach Meshach and Abednego au awe the visitation of god does not just need people that will just go to church on sunday give tithe and offering no the visitation of God will not just need people that will say, I'm born again, I come from a family that believe God. No. The visitation of God need the radical, the people that will say it is all about Jesus. I don't care whether everybody will run away from me. I don't care whether I will lose friends, but I stand with Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they need mine. Mfalme anawambia, we shall put you on the fire. Na mfalme anasema, iongezo marasaba, na wanaona. Lakini wanasema, mm-mm. We shall not bow to that God. Mfalme anasema, ongeza tena. Wanasema, aa, atinamii huyo mungu. But the Bible says, even in the process of going to the fire, God did not show up. Hmm? Dani. Mungu wa kukuja. Asubui, moto inongezo wa mungu wa kuji. Sasaba, yongezo ijioni wakati wanako kwa moto, mungu wa kuji. Lakini mandiko nasema, when they were in the fire, say when I'm in fire, that is when the visitation of God will come. Because God is looking for people. The people that will say it is not all about me. The people that will lay down their own understanding, their own pride, their own ability. And, and, and lift up their eyes to Jesus. Kama vile Daudi anasema into Psalms 121. That I will lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where my help will come from. My help comes from the Lord. Look, Paul is walking with God. When I'm tupa, when I'm piga na mawe, Paul and Akaka na koma mekufa. They drew him on the street. But the following morning, they found Paul and Aubiri kwa street. When I say, is this not the Paul ambaye tuliwa jana? He still proclaimed the gospel. And Paul is coming to a point and saying, it is not me who live in anymore, but it is Christ who live in me. And I'm looking for the people. I'm looking for the church. I'm looking for brethren that will walk will say it is all about Jesus that will lay down every own understanding it is all about Jesus because God is looking for revival career not just people, not just church not just brethren but the people that will lay down because God is visiting there is a mighty visitation of God in our lives but we fail to understand the visitation of God because our minds are not focused on what God wants us to do. Number five. The fifth thing that comes with the vision of God. It is victory. Say victory. And I've come to connect you with your victory. I don't care how many times you have tried. Ah, I don't care how many times you have thrown your nets into the waters. But the Bible says Pete, Petro, John and James. They threw their net all night long. 
But in the morning, when Jesus visited them in the show, he didn't, he didn't help them to go to fish, but he told them, draw on your light hand. And something that was not impossible for the whole night, it was possible by the word of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, verses 20 to 25. 2 Chronicles 20, chapter 20, verses 20 to 25. The Bible so, said, so they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the name of the Lord, and you shall be established. Ha. Hallelujah. This is, a top, this is a, another series of another one man. Believe in, the, in his prophet, and you shall prosper. 21. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And listen to verses 22. Susan. The Lord has spoken to Jehoshaphat. Akamambia Jehoshaphat, watana na hizo vitu zingine. Wachana na hayo mambo mengine. But raise your army. Gather them. Huh? Peter wakumbuka hii ile siku. Maadui wanainukania. Eh ndio hiyo sasa. But in verses 22, after the Lord stationed them and tell them go worship me, sing, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. This is what happened from verses 22. Now, when they begin to sing and praise the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. If you are a prayer warrior, I am giving you the prayer items. Because this is a verse that is enough for you to bring down the mountains and the valleys. This is the prayer item that, is, that can help you to, to do exploit. For the people of Moab and, and Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Zaire and uttered, killed, and destroyed them. And when they had made end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Hey. Listen. God causes our enemy to begin to fight among themselves. Yani God anakuambia wachana na vita, wachana na hiyo mambo mengine, wachana na kufunga na kuomba, but take an initiative, begin to worship me, begin to praise my name, begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says when Jehoshaphat read the battle, when the army were worshiping the Lord, something powerful happened and the enemy begin to fight among themselves. Anachukua rungu anapiga mwingine anamwambia wewe umenizoea mbaya. Wakawana. Until they were not able to help each another, they, one another, they destroyed one another completely. And in verses 24, so when Judah came to a place of rooking the wilderness, they rooked toward the multitude, and there were and there were dead bodies fallen on the earth, and no one had escaped. And I've come to declare to you: let the enemy that are rising against your life. I release the anointing upon you that let none of them escape. I've come to decree by the virtue of the anointing, let none of them escape. Nina Tangaza, let there be confusion among themselves and begin to fight among themselves. And I declare, let the power of God. Be manifested in your life. Whew. And verses 25. Then Jehoshaphat and his people came and took their spoil. They found among them an abundance of variable of dead bodies, the precious jewelries, the stripes of them, the strife of themselves, more than they could carry away. And they and that day they gathered the spoil. Because they had so much to carry. And I've come to declare to you tonight. 
kile zile siraha zitakazo tumiwa na madui zako kuangamiza. I have come to declare. May the Lord give you victory. Not just victory but I declare. By the end of that battle may you go home with jewelries. Mandiko inasema walipo madui zao walipo uwana. Sio Jehoshaphat. Go and lead that verse. Sio Jehoshaphat alipigana. Lakini mandiko inasema wali nukania wakapigana. Wakaumizana wakawana. Kazi ya Jehoshaphat ilikuwa ni kumabudu mungu. Kusema mungu unastahiri. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe. Wewe ni mwenye nguvu na uwezo. Na walipo fika katika battlefield. Mandiko inasema wali yaza kuokota dahabu na feather. Wakaza kuokota jiwales. Wakabeba. Hadi ya waku wana mali pakweka. And I come to declare to you. In the battlefield, may you not go home empty-handed. But whatever the enemy has carried, whatever the enemy has stolen in your life, whatever the star that has been ruptured in your life, I declare, let there be enough, let them be, be restored over your life, that you shall have enough to carry, not even enough to carry, but you shall have no praise to put more. Hallelujah. Ibrahim Arianda Egypt, Bada Yakua Nadret Yanja, and they went with Sarai. By then she was she was not yet Havakome Poke the covenant, so her name was still Sarai because her name was not changed. Now Maripo enda Egypt, Wakakuta Nam Falme Moja. Ambele Angaria Mkewake na Kamtamani. His name was uh Abimerek. Namadiko Nasema Uepo Amungu Ukashuka Juya Ibrahimu. Lakini baada Ibrahim kudanganya, kasema ni sister yake ndio asiwawe. Lakini uwepo wa Mungu kashuka katika ule mji. Mungu akafanya wanaume wote waliyekuwa katika huo mji. They could not be able to sleep with a woman. The king anauliza, what is happening? Are you feeling the same way I'm feeling? The God anasema, I'm feeling the same. Anauliza mwingine anasema, I'm feeling the same. And something came upon their mind and they said, I think the problem is this woman. She might be a woman of a prophet. Na mandiko anasema one of the prophets. Actually he was not a prophet of God. He was uh, our ma, ma, magician. Haka kuja kambia mfalme. Haka mambia there is danger in the land. If you want this calamity to leave our land, you need to kick this woman out of this place together with the, with the husband. And you don't need just to kick them empty handed. Give them mali. Na mandiko anasema Ibrahimu ambaye alikuwa medhiretaniwa na madui zake. Alitoka katika ule mji akiwa na mali utajiri ngamia na wafanyikazi. And have come to release the same anointing that was working in those days. May that anointing fall upon you. May you reap the praise that you are in that place of captivity. In that place of a threat. May you leave that place not empty handed but may you carry enough from the basket of your enemies. Hey. I declare victory upon your life. No more. No more battles. The Lord has conquered the battle on our behalf. Jesus died on the cross and said it is finished. In other words, we can walk in the grace of God. We can walk in the path of God with power. And finally, when the visitation of God comes, he comes with a miracle. And I've come to declare tonight, somebody is leaving this place with a miracle. You're not going to leave this place the way you came. If you leave this place the way we came, then this is not the meeting of God. But if this is the meeting of God, you will leave this place packed with a miracle. Listen to the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 31. <laughs> now, in the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to go to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, a virgin withdrawn to a man whose name was Joseph, whose house of, of, uh, of the house of David, the virgin name was Mary. Wow. And having, one, having coming in, the angel said to her, Rejoice highly, favored one, for the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among the women. Verses 29. But when he saw him, she was trembled at the at his saying and considered what the manner of greeting this was. 
Then the angel of the Lord said, Do not fear Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Mary is in her daily business, like the way you came here on Sunday. I believe you went to a fellowship like you where you came here today. Na Mary akiwa pale maliko anasema it was the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee. And he found a virgin, Mary, the woman who has never slept with a man. You know, if it was today, it was not the right person to be sent a message. Because she didn't have an experience even to carry the pregnancy. You cannot just give a pregnancy of Messiah, the King of Kings, the Almighty, the Lion of Judah, to be carried by someone who has an, an experience. I believe they could have gone to a woman like a woman by an experience, Yakubeba Mimba. But they came to a woman. And the Bible says, the Lord spoke, to, the angel of the Lord spoke to her and said, Rejoice, because you are highly favored. And I have come to decree to somebody that rejoice tonight because you are highly favored. Because you got a chance to be in this meeting. Sababu ya kuwa katika umkutano. You are highly favored. And every package and anointing that God has packed for, for this meeting tonight. You are going to go home with a package. Because you are in the meeting of the Lord. And now Mary is trembling. Mary is getting worried. You know, oh, I have seen a man. You know, I am planning to get married. Many at the time we have our own plans. Mary had her own plans. Because Mary wanted to get married to Joseph. And bring a good reputation and a good name to, his, to her family. But now comes the angel of the Lord. He's changing everything. And anytime there is a miracle of the Lord that is about to pop up in your life. There must be a change of plan. You know sometimes we stick in our own plan and say I'm here. Peter is getting married soon. And if you ask, you tell Peter, stop. Don't, don't, don't marry that girl. Don't do that wedding. Peter will fight me. He will leave this church. That was the story of the Mary. Now, the angel of the Lord comes and tells her, now there is a change of plan. I know you are a virgin. It is a tradition in Israel that you must be married being virgin. But now the angel of the Lord is telling her, you must change this plan because you are favored of the Lord. You are carrying something that is not unique. <laughs> and I declare to somebody tonight, you carry something that is not unique. Something that is not unique cannot be contaminated. It cannot be mixed. It cannot be interfered. And Mary was thinking, how will Joseph say? How will be my people say? But I've come to declare to somebody when the miracle of the Lord comes and it is about to fall in your life, be ready for the change of plan because God had to enrine, he had to adjust, he had to change your plan. You were, the way you see things, the way you understand things, he had to change the way you, you, you look at things because when the plan of God comes in your life, it comes with a miracle. Zachariah is a priest in the temple. And the Holy Spirit of God came to speak to him through an angel. Uh, I'm going to give you a son and his name is going to be John. And uh, this, um, this uh, John will be, uh, will be given a mandate to prepare the way for Messiah. He listened to God. But inside his heart, there was a change of plan in him. And God had to deal with him. He made him mute for nine months. Akienda kuambia Elizabeth, unajua tulikuwa na Mungu. He can't talk. Because he wanted to destroy and stop the plan of God. And I've come to declare to you, let there be an atmosphere of miracle. And I declare, let there be nothing that can interfere with the process of God. Because when God comes, he adjusts, he works on the process and makes sure it is fulfilled. God is speaking to Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3. Nimemaliza kubiri. Exodus chapter 3. And the Bible says when he was in the wilderness, the, 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 the presence of God came as a burning bush. And Abraham, uh, I mean Moses saw God in a burning bush. And one thing that came in his mind 
I can notice who you ni Mungu. Remember he was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew son. Sio nakumbuka hivyo. He was born a Hebrew son but he was raised by the Pharaoh's daughter. Though he had learned in the tradition of Egypt but he was still a Hebrew. Remember even the time he found the two Hebrew fighting the Egyptians. One day the first day he find an Egyptian fighting an Hebrew he killed Egyptian. The following day he find an Israelite and an Israelite wakipigana. Akaingia kabisa. 